Hi, I'm Mardell Ryan, and today I'm going to show you how to use this new product called Patina Gel. This is liver of sulfur in a stabilized gel form. This is a much easier way to use liver of sulfur. It's non-flammable, it lasts forever because it doesn't degrade and lighten air the way that the chunk form or the liquid form does. This is the type of liver of sulfur that we've been selling for years, and this works really well. But the problem is that the chunks are all of various sizes and I end up wasting a lot of this material because rather than mash it up, a lot of times what I'll do is just throw a chunk in, get the color that I want, pull out the rest and throw it away because once this gets wet, it's no good anymore. It starts to degrade immediately. So if I put a wet piece back into my container, I would ruin the rest of the container and that's a big waste. Another problem with this kind of liver of sulfur is that it'll go bad if I don't get the lid on quite right. So let's say that I just sort of put the lid on there like this. By tomorrow, everything that's in this container is going to go bad. And it'll no longer be effective, and I've just wasted all the money here. This liver of sulfur is in a gel form, and this is completely stable. I can leave the lid off of here and this stays completely stable. It does not go bad like the lump form of liver of sulfur. The liquid liver of sulfur is pre-mixed, but it goes bad very, very quickly and it's also very expensive because you're paying for mostly water. I want to make sure my pieces are really clean before I patina them because if there's any fingerprints on the metal, that's going to resist the patina and then I would have a product that is either uneven or shows fingerprints. There's an easy way to clean the metal using a very simple solution of ammonia, water, and soap. I have a piece here that I've been touching and I've got fingerprints all over it. So I want to go ahead and give this a nice cleaning before I put it in my patina solution. And what I have here is hot water and I'm just going to add a little splash of ammonia and I'm going to add a little squirt of soap. And now I've got a toothbrush in here and all I need to do is just kind of clean this off. And then I really don't want to touch it with my fingers after this, so I'm going to use a rag to dry that off and then I won't touch it again. And that is enough to remove the fingerprints. So let's get started. I'm going to start with um, some containers of water here. And I've got some cold water. I'll just put a little bit in it, this one here. And all I need to do is just dip into this container, just a little dab of this, and simply stir it up. This is a piece of precious metal clay, and this has been pre-polished. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip it into, and we'll really drop it into this container. And in just a second here, I can already see that it's starting to turn. So I've already got a gold color here. In order to stop the process, because what's happening here is now I've got this this liver of sulfur on the metal and it's going to continue darkening and if I just leave this for a couple of minutes you'll see what happens It's going to get even darker than this so I'm going to set this one aside and we're going to mix up a neutralizing bath and when you're working with liver of sulfur it's real important to have a neutralizing bath not just plain water you want to have baking soda in it and um, Here's the box so you know you get the right thing. Now this is a ridiculously giant box, but I use a lot of it so I get the gigantic one. You can get little ones if you want, but um, I don't want you to be confused about what it is that you're going to put in here. So this is baking soda, and it doesn't really matter how much I put in. I'm just going to put a whole ton of it in here. And um, I'm going to stir that up with my little popsicle stick. The popsicle stick I find makes a really good um, tool for dipping in and getting the... Um, patina gel out. So I just want to stir that up. And this piece here, now this is the first one that I dipped, and you can see that the color has continued to um, progress a little bit here. And if I want to hold on to this exactly where it's at, then I want to go ahead and put it in the water at this point right here. This is using completely cold water. I can get a much faster result if I heat up either my metal or my solution. 
it's not that the cold water is less effective, it's just that it works more slowly. This water is pretty hot. This is, um, it's steaming, but it's not boiling. And it's very important that you don't use boiling water because liver sulfur releases a gas called sulfur dioxide that's actually poisonous to breathe um, when it's heated to either boiling or if it's burned. So you never want to use boiling hot water and you never want to put a flame on it when it's wet. For instance, if I was to dip a piece of metal in the solution and then heat it up with a torch, that's a no-no. That's very dangerous and that would release some sulfur dioxide gas and you don't want to breathe that. If you use it like I'm explaining to you, it's perfectly safe and it's no problem at all. So I'm going to go ahead and get um, some more patina gel here. I don't need much of this. I just dip my popsicle stick in and stir this up. Okay, so this is a hot solution now. And I'm going to take a piece here that has been uh, tumbled in the tumbler. So it's already pre-polished. And I'm just going to go ahead and dip that in here really quick. And you'll see that this is really, really quick. Now look at how fast that happened. And uh, if I want to, I can go ahead and put that in the neutralizing bath now, and that's going to hold that color right there. This is a piece of metal clay that's just fresh from the kiln. And this one I'm going to just dip in real quick and pull that out. What you'll find is that if it's not polished first, the colors tend to move a little bit slower. This one here, you can see this isn't moving quite as fast as the other one. The neutralizing bath not only stops the action from happening, but it neutralizes what's kind of soaked into the metal clay surface because precious metal clay is very porous and the liver of sulfur kind of gets down into the pores and what will happen is that after I've patinaed my pieces and if I just leave them in here for just a couple of seconds and then I take it out and start polishing it, I'll put that down and a few minutes later I'll come back and it'll be dark again. So the longer I leave it in the neutralizing bath, the less repolishing I'm going to have to do. So I usually leave these pieces in for quite a few minutes. For this hot water now, I'm going to add some ammonia to it and that's going to help me to get the colors real quickly, the real beautiful colors that I'm looking for. You can use the lemon scented ammonia if you want. Um, I usually kind of avoid the sudsy one because I don't need the suds. And I'm just going to put, oh, about a tablespoon in there. And now I'm going to take this piece here and just quickly dip it in and then take it out and that'll give us a color. The thing about this is, is that I get a different result if I put it in flat like this or like this and it the back side, the part that's to the bottom, I'm going to get the best colors if I dip it down like this and back up. That's what I find anyway. So I'm going to hold this by the sides and I'm just going to dip it in and pull it out. And that's not as much as I want. Let me just do that again. So this is the way it's going to go. You're going to, uh, you're going to dip it in and take it out a couple of times until you get what you want. And then once you find what you like, then you can um, remove it and put it in your neutralizing bath and that'll stop that process so it won't go any further. Oh, and that's really pretty now. Look at those beautiful blues. So this really is just to show you what's possible with this. This is a piece of bronze clay and it's been polished but, oh, and you can see already just where I'm touching it. See, I can even do it this way. Just where I'm touching it, it's instantly coloring. So that's the result you get on bronze. I can I, sometimes I'll just paint that on and I'll let that sit here a little bit. That's kind of pretty. It also works on copper and it works real quick. Just dip my piece in and you can see that developing. I'm gonna leave that sitting in there for a minute. I also have some brass here. This is a piece of um, raw brass and I'm just gonna go ahead and dip that in here. 